Namaskar my dear friends. In our previous video, you have learned about the different conic curves and methods of drawing different conic curves like ellipse, parabola and hyperbola. Now today, we are going to learn about the cycloidal curve. Okay, so before learn about the cycloidal curve, let us understand what is the rolute. So cycloidal group of curves, when one curve rolls over another curve without slipping or sliding, the path of any point of the rolling curve is called a rolute. Okay. So when the rolling curve is a circle and the curve on which it rolls is a straight line or a circle, we get a cycloidal group of curve. Okay, so if this curve, the rolling curve, is a circle and on which it rolls is whether a straight line or a circle, then the path of any point on that rolling curve is known as a cycloidal group of curve. Now, classification of cycloidal group of curves. So there are three types of cycloidal curves, cycloid, epicycloid and hypocycloid. So cycloid is classified by two different ways. One is the inferior trochoid and superior trochoid. Similarly, epicycloid is classified by inferior epitrochoid and superior epitrochoid and hypocycloid also classified by inferior hypotrochoid and superior hypotrochoid. So these are the different types of the cycloidal curves. Now, first one is the cycloid. What is the cycloid? The cycloid is a locus of a point on the circumference of a rolling circle that is known as the generator which rolls without slipping or sliding along a fixed straight line or a directing line or a director. Okay, so if any circle which is rolling without slipping or sliding on a straight line, then any point on the circumference of that circle, the path of that point is called a cycloid. Now let us see here. Uh, see the center and one circle is there. Okay. Now this circle is known as the rolling circle or generator because it is generating a curve. That's why it is known as a generator. Now here you can see directing line or director because it directs the rolling circle. That's why it is known as the directing line or director. Now this circle is rolling on this directing line by one complete revolution. Okay? And the P is a point and this contact between this circle and the directing line and the point P is on the circumference of this rolling circle. So now it is rolling in this direction, clockwise direction. So after one half revolution, this circle will reach at here. Okay, so the position of the circle after the one half revolution. So at that time, a point on the circumference of this circle, it will reach at the top of this circle. Okay, now for the next one half circle, okay, the point P will be reached at here. Now the path of this point P okay, and the center will be here. So this path of point C is known as a cycloid. So this curve is known as a cycloidal curve. Then next one is a epicycloid. So epicycloid is a locus of point P on the circumference of a rolling circle or generator which rolls without slipping or sliding outside another circle called the directing circle. 
Okay. So if any circle which rolls over another circle, then the uh, path of point on the circumference of the rolling circle is known as a epicycloid. So you have to remember that the circle is rolling outside the another circle. Outside the another circle, then it is known as a epicycloid. So let us see here the circle. This circle is a rolling circle, okay. And this circle is a directing circle. Now this circle is rolls over this another circle. Okay, so after the one complete revolution it will travel an angle phi. Okay. So after the one complete revolution of the circle, it will reach on the other side and the radius of the directing circle is Rd and the radius of this generating circle is R. Now here this R P0P P, circumference of a generating circle. So therefore, you can find this angle phi. This angle phi is equal to, so Rd into phi is equal to 2 pi R. So therefore, this angle phi, phi is equal to 360 degree into small r upon capital R. Small r is a radius of a rolling circle and capital Rd is a radius of directing circle. So by this way, you can find this angle Five, okay, angle five. So after the one complete revolution, the angular displacement of this circle is a five. So at P zero is the initial point here. It is rolling. So after the one half revolution, the circle will reach here, and the position of point P zero will be here. And after the one complete revolution, the point P0 will be here. So the path of this point P is known as an epicycloid. So this curve, this curve is known as epicycloid. Now next one is the hypocycloid. Hypocycloid is the locus of point P on the circumference of a rolling circle which rolls without slipping or sliding inside the another circle called the directing circle. So difference between the hypo and EP is that in hypocycloid, the rolling circle is rolled inside the directing circle. When circle rolls inside the directing circle, then the path of the point on the circumference of rolling circle is known as a hypocycloid. Now let us see here, you can see this is a this green circle is a directing circle you can see and this circle is a rolling circle whose radius is r and the radius of the directing circle is capital r okay it is rolling inside this circle so you can see the direction of the rolling so initially the point p at here after the one complete revolution it will uh, travel the angular distance displacement of phi. So the final position of point P will be here. And this curve, this curve is known as a hypocycloid. Now, what is trochoid? Locus of point inside or outside the circumference of a rolling circle, which rolls without slipping or sliding along a fixed straight line or a fixed circle. Okay. So, in case of the cycloid, epicycloid and hypocycloid, you know that the point is on the circumference. But here you can say this is the circle. If the our point, point will be here, okay, the point P will be here. So, we can say this point P is outside the circumference of this circle, okay. So, the path of this point P is known as the trochoid. And if it is the outside of the circle, then it is known as the superior trochoid. And if this point is inside the circle, then it is known as a inferior trochoid. We discuss if the point is inside the circumference of the circle, 
it is called the inferior trochoid and if the point is outside the circumference of the circle it is called the superior trochoid now i hope you can understand very well about the different terminology used in the cycloidal curve now let us see how to draw a cycloid by one problem draw cycloid for one revolution of a rolling circle having diameter as 60 mm okay so we have to draw the cycloid that means cycloid means the a circle which is rolling on the a straight line okay and the diameter of the circle is 60 mm so first of all we have to draw a circle of diameter 60 mm okay this is known as the rolling circle okay and diameter is 60 mm right and this direction which shows the direction of rotation of this circle now divide this circle into the 12 equal division 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 okay now we have to draw a directing line okay this is known as the directing line and what will be the length of this directing line so the length of this directing line is equal to pi d so here in our case you have to multiply this 60 with pi so you will get the total length okay or we can say 2 pi r so length of the directing line is 2 pi r or pi d now divide this directing line into the 12 division okay number of division equal to number of divisions of circle so divide this directing line into the 12 division 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and 12 okay so now here this point is a center of the circle and initially the center is c0 okay so after the one complete revolution this circle will reach at here at this point okay so this is the center line now we have to divide the center line into the 12 number of parts and the parts are c0 is the center Okay, then C one, C two, C three, C four, up to the C twelve. Okay. Now, when the circle rolls one twelfth of the revolution at that time, the center C zero will reach at C one. At this point one of the circle, it will match with this point one on a directing line. Similarly, if it rolls up two twelfth, then the center c0 it will reach at c2 and so so on the center c0 it will reach at c12 points now the next step is uh, draw line which are parallel to the directing line passing from the different points of the circle so from 1 and 11 from 2 and 10 okay and 3 and 9 already drawn 4 and 8 Five and six, now oh, sorry, five and seven and six. Okay, now the main part of this uh, you have to remember that the radius remains constant equal to radius of the rolling circle. Okay, so here the radius is small r, or we can say the ra uh, sorry radius is equal to thirty mm. Okay, and first of all. This P zero is our initial point. The point P is at here. Okay. Now C one at the center. Radius equal to radius of rolling circle and rho one R. So you can see this R will intersect this line passing from point one at point P one. Similarly, the center is C two and rho R same radius. so it will intersect this line passing from 2 and 10 as p2 and now c3 center and rho r so it will intersect this line which is passing from point 3 at point p3 now c4 center rho r 
it will intersect the line which passing from point 4 at point P4 and here same you will get the point P5, point P6, P7, P8, P9, P10, P11 and P12. So radius remains constant and we have to change the center from C1 to C12. Now join all these points P0 to P12 by a smooth curve. So this curve is known as a cycloid. Okay. Now if you want to draw the tangent and normal at this point S on this curve, then first of all this S as a center and radius equal to radius of rolling circle and draw R which will intersect this center line at point S1. Okay. Now from point S1, draw a line which is perpendicular to the center line and it will intersect the directing line at point N. So now join this N with S. So this N N is a normal and draw another line which is perpendicular to normal from passing from point S is known as a tangent. So this is known as a cycloid. Now let us understand epicycloid by one problem. A circle of 25 mm radius rolls on the circumference of another circle of 150 mm diameter and outside it. Draw the locus of point P on the circumference of the rolling circle for one complete revolution of it. Name the curve and draw tangent and normal to the curve at a point 115 mm from the center of the bigger circle. Now you know that here the circle is ro rolling over the another circle and outside it. So that's why we can say the curve is a epicycloid. Okay. Now let us see. So first step is find out the included angle phi by using the equation. You know that the 360 degree into small r is the radius of rolling circle. Capital R is the radius of directing circle. So 360 into 25 uh, upon 75 is equal to 120 degree. Second step, draw a vertical line and draw two lines at 60 degree on either sides. Okay, so total angle is 120 degree, that's why. Third step, at a distance of 75 mm from O, draw part of the circle taking radius equal to 75 mm. And fourth, from the circle, mark point C outside the circle at a distance of 25 mm and draw a circle taking the center as point C. Well, these are the different steps to draw the epicycloid. Okay, now as per these different four steps, first of all, we have already find the angle is equal to 120 degree. So point O, now from point O, draw a vertical line and on the both side of this line, draw to another line at an angle of 60 degree, 5 by 2, 5 by 2, okay. Now this O at the center and radius equal to 75 mm and draw directing circle, okay. So this circle is a directing circle, radius is 75 mm. Now from this point, from this point, okay, mark the center which is equal to 25 mm on this line and draw a rolling circle whose radius is 25 mm, right? This is a rolling circle. Now divide this rolling circle, center is C0, divide this rolling circle into the different eight division here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. You can divide 
12 division also okay so now divide this angle phi into the 8 division okay so after the one complete revolution this circle will reach at here so c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 c7 and c8 so you have to divide this angle into the eight different division now this o as a center and radius equal to o1 and draw a circle which will passing from the point one and seven okay so similarly the right center will be o and draw the different circle which are passing from all this point one to eight so circle passing from one and seven from two and six from three and five and from four now you have to take the radius equal to rolling circle that means the 25 mm and take the different center c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 up to c8 and draw arc so first one c1 as a center radius equal to 25 mm and draw arc which we intersect the circle passing from point 1 that point will be p1 so initial point p0 will be here so here you can get point p1 similarly c2 as a center you will get the point p2 will be here similarly point p3 P4, P5, P6, P7, and P8. Now join all this point by a smooth curve. So this curve is known as a epicycloid. Right? This curve is known as a epicycloid. Okay. Now we have to draw a tangent and normal at a point which is 115 mm so point s will be here okay, at a 115 mm now from s uh, as a center radius equal to 25 mm and draw circle and it will intersect this center circle at a point u now join u with o Okay. and it will intersect this directing circle at point n okay now join this n with s it is known as a normal and this draw a line which is perpendicular to this normal is known as a tangent now the next a circle of 80 mm diameter rolls on the circumference of another circle of 120 mm radius and inside it draw the locus of the point P on the circumference of the rolling circle for one complete revolution of it. Name the curve and draw tangent and normal to the curve at a point 100 mm from the center of either circle. Now here the circle which is rolling inside the another circle. So that's why this curve is known as a hypocycloid. Okay. So first of all, we have to find out this included angle. Okay. So as per the equation, phi is equal to 360 into small r upon capital R. Right. So included angle is equal to 120 degree. So similarly, in a previous example, draw a line vertical and 5 by 2, 5 by 2, that is the 60 degree, 60 degree on each side. Okay. And radius is equal to R, means the directing circle radius. Okay. And draw a circle. Now inside, take a center and draw another circle of radius equal to small r that means the 40 mm okay this circle is known as a 
rolling circle. Now divide this circle into the 12 equal division. The direction of rolling of this rolling circle is given here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Okay. So these are the different points. Now here draw the center circle and divide this circle into the 12 division and name it C0 to C12. Okay, so C1, C2, C3, up to C12. Now similarly, this O as the center and draw a different circle passing from the point 1 to 12. So 1 and 11, 2 and 10, 3 and 9, 8 and 4, 7 and 5, and finally 6. Now procedure remains same as in epicycloid. C1 as the center, radius equal to radius of the rolling circle, and rho r. Initially, the point P0 will be here. Now C1 as the center, radius r. So you will get the point P1 as here. Similarly, C2 center, you will get the point P2. Now C3 center, you will get the point P3. Similarly, find all the points P4, P5, P6, P7, P8, P9, P10, P11, and P12. Now join all these points by a smooth curve. So this curve is known as a hypocycloid. Now let's draw the tangent and normal at a point of 100 mm from O. So point S is here. Okay. Now from S as the center and radius equal to the rolling circle radius and draw a R which will intersect this center circle at this point. Now join this point with O and extend it up to this circle and this point is N. Now join this N with the S, so it is a normal and another line which is perpendicular to this normal is known as a tangent. Okay. Now one more example, so by means of a drawing that when the diameter of rolling circle is half the diameter of directing circle, the hypocycloid is a straight line. Okay. So diameter of rolling circle is half the diameter of the directing circle, then the hypocycloid you will get will be a straight line. Now let us understand here. This O is the center, another point C will be here. Okay, so this is the uh, rolling circle. Okay, and the diameter of this directing circle is double this rolling circle. So now from O as the center and radius equal to diameter of rolling circle. Divide this circle into the 12 division and draw a direct ring circle. Okay. Similarly, draw a different circle passing from the different points 1, 2, 3, up to 12. Okay. And here you will get the center from C1 to C12. Okay. Now the centers are C1, C2, C3, C4 and up to C12 and radius equal to the rolling circle and draw different arc. So you will get the different point P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8, P9, P10, P11 and P12. Now join all these points 
so you will get the straight line so here hypocycloid is a straight line so if the diameter of directing circle is double the diameter of rolling circle then it's hypocycloid is a straight line so i hope you can understand very well about the different cycloidal curves and how to draw the cycloidal curve. Thank you very much. Now in our next lecture, you will learn about the involute curves.